Oh, I'm, I'm going to be bold and uh, use a few slides from uh, my presentation yesterday in LPC. So if you saw it already, just uh, think about something else. I'll do it very quick. Uh, so namespaces, if I take the definition from LWN, that's a, a method to provide a group of processes with the illusion that they are the only process running on the system. Uh, currently, they, car they cover almost everything that we need in, uh, in Linux. What they do not cover, um, which is interesting to us in the, mo in the virtualization for mobile uh, devices, um, is the case of uh, peripherals and, uh, and variety of devices that exist in the system. Could be peripherals, uh, which are actually hardware, or, um, or they could be logical devices. Um, so I'm going to show you first what we want to get, what we want to have at the end. Uh, we have a little bit of... Uh, light problem here, so let's see if it gets any better. Uh, this is uh, my Android, and it's a regular Android. It's a little bit, no, it's okay, it's not that slow. Uh, the light is not very good. But what's, uh, what's very special here is that I have actually two Androids running on the same device. If I click over here, uh, then I get another Android. And now I have to put my super password inside, and I have another Android with different uh, setup. Um, it's using namespaces. Uh, they are completely separate. Uh, I usually show also some performance uh, show. So this is a 3D rendering benchmark that runs on the device. Uh, you can see that the measure, it's hard to see there, but it's a 60 frames per second. And if I click, double click on the home button, I go to the other persona or other container, I can run another benchmark. And I get another benchmark running at the same time in parallel on the other container. So both of them are running. I can switch back to the first one, then switch back to the other one, and so forth. So this is, this is my end goal. I show this because I want to show what I want to get at the end. And now back to the presentation. Now you saw all, why we do all this. Uh, the one thing that we really need to do to get to this point, uh, to run multiple containers which are interactive on a real mobile device, could be a, mo a smartphone or a container or, or a tablet or any other thing, is we need to be able to multiplex and share those devices which are physical on the system. So for example, the uh, frame buffer, if we have two containers that run Android and both of them are trying to write uh, to the frame buffer, only one of them should really succeed at the time. It's the one that we're interacting with, the one that's in the foreground. Uh, the other one is in the background, it should not get real access. But when we switch between them, we want the other one to get the real access and the fast, direct pass-through uh, writing to the frame buffer, while the first one should be denied access. And we want to do that, ideally, in a way that's trans transparent to the system that's running on top of us, just like we do with other containers, uh, with other namespaces. Uh, similarly, with the input subsystem, we want the input to go to the foreground or the currently active, the, the interactive container, not to the other one. If we type something on the screen, uh, it's, if it's a password, we want it to go to the right uh, container, not to the one in the background. So these are the challenges, and, and the question is um, uh, how we do that. Uh, to do that, what we did is we added a, um, a device namespace uh, abstraction to the kernel, <coughs> which is like the other namespaces. And the idea of this namespace is twofold. First, it looks upwards, and it provides uh, virtualized state and visibility of devices to user space. So for example, we have a separate minor number count for each container, so they don't um, uh, mix the minor count between them. Uh, we also give this a separate state for each container, and also it looks downwards and it tries to multiplex the access to those devices. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, we have to define a new concept that says whether a namespace is active or non-active, um, and we can put devices in an active namespaces. We can also put them in non-active namespaces. The behavior of the device will change depending whether it is right now being called in an active namespaces or not. For example, the frame buffer, if you draw to the frame buffer when you are in the active namespace, then you actually reach the screen. Otherwise, you will reach a buffer uh, somewhere in the system. Uh, we, have a we have a lot more uh, devices that we have uh, um, basically to take care of, and that's why the device namespace abstraction is required. Uh, so the first challenge is we have a lot of devices, some of them logical, many of them are physical, and we need uh, some way to virtualize them um, like we do with other resources in the system, particularly to keep the state separate. 
and we have a second challenge, uh, which is the interactive usage. We need to multiplex the access so that the current container gets full access or path through access, the other container does not. And we do that by um, defining the concept of active or non-active container, uh, active or non-active namespace, uh, which, uh, um, which affects how the device is actually operating. Quick two examples with a frame buffer. What do we do when we have, let's say, three containers trying to run uh, uh, to use a frame buffer? Uh, we put a slightly a thin layer of virtualization on top of the frame buffer, uh, which d can be told whether you're currently active or non-active, or in other words, foreground or background. Uh, if you're in the foreground, you get direct mapping to the frame buffer and direct dioctal access to the frame buffer. If you're non-active, then you get a mapping to somewhere in the RAM, and your ioctals are uh, recorded somewhere uh, uh, in a different way. And um, so this is how it looks. When we switch from one foreground to another foreground, then the mapping actually changes under, uh, underneath the system. So we change the mapping, we make sure that whatever is mapped to the real device is now mapped to a buffer. Whatever was mapped to a buffer now is mapped to the real devices. We switch the buffers and all is ready, uh, and all is ready to go. So is this done at DRI2 level? Uh, this is actually right now done on the FB level, at the, the frame buffer level, and you, you would do the same with DRI, we just didn't do it yet. Um, currently, nearly all Android devices use frame buffer still. So. Um, same thing with the input. You want the input to only go to one, usually, you want it to only go to one uh, container. Uh, so you virtualize the input subsystem and you basically you ask a simple question, is the client that is registered for this event, is it running in the foreground or in the background uh, uh, namespace? If it's foreground, pass the, the, the event, otherwise don't pass the event. There are some excep exceptions for that. Um, I won't go into the, de uh, the details right now, but it's fairly simple code that goes in there. Um, when you switch, the input goes somewhere else. Uh, there are more use cases for device uh, namespaces than just the mobile virtualization. We feel that mobile virtualization is a, is a huge thing and, and we see a lot of demand to being able to run more than one virtual phone or virtual tablet or, or container in, on a mobile phone. But, uh, and you, you can see several candidates over here. But it's also for, for IVI uh, cases. Uh, uh, device namespaces can also be beneficial for containers and servers. For example, if you want to do a checkpoint restart, you want to be able to preserve your minor number that you got in the original execution. So you need to be able to have a, um, a predictable um, same order of allocation of minor numbers elsewhere. elsewhere. Um, <coughs> correct. And we'll get there later. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is exactly uh, what we're going to what we would like to discuss. Um, I guess uh, well, some of the other work on on the virtualization of some of the logical devices is also useful for uh, whoever wants to run Android on servers. Uh, also works. Um, if someone wants to take this to a desktop, also fine. Um, I haven't found a, a strong use case for that, uh, but that's about that's about it. So this is a, a very quick overview of what we did and, and what the patches do. It's a series of uh, eight patches so far. Uh, very much not intrusive, uh, 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 fairly simple. The largest one is the frame buffer, actually. And uh, what we would like to dedicate the rest of the time is actually to discuss um, and talk about uh, we found something that we feel is broken in the system, uh, which is no, no, uh, lack of support for hardware devices and, and uh, um, yeah. interactivity. And we're trying to figure out what else is broken, uh, what other use cases are around, uh, and so forth. So I'll let Emil take that. Yeah. So um, we've already asked some of these questions, uh, the people that are sitting here, but we'd like to open the discussion, this question to discussion here. So. What else do people think is broken in the view of uh, processes running inside a container? Um, I'll give examples of, of uh, answers that we've already heard. Uh, the Sisyphus view of uh, processes inside a container, you can say that it is broken because it's not consistent with, uh, with what the processes in the system can or cannot do. Uh, same goes for a U event. Um, I, I guess that uh, OpenVZ and, uh, and, and uh, an existing solution, they, they work around uh, these breakages 
or not breakages, depending how you say uh, you think of it, uh, with username space solutions. Um, uh, how about uh, uh, access to uh, virtual uh, devices, like uh, allowing a process to create its own loop device or device mapper inside a container? Is that a use case? I mean, it's a use case for us in Android. We'd like to hear if it's a use case for someone else. And of course, peripherals. Uh, most of the work here uh, is addressed at accessing peripherals uh, from within multiple namespaces. So if anyone else has uh, similar use cases, we'd be happy to hear about them. Um, uh, what are the alternative to fix those uh, things that may be broken? <coughs> so there's device namespace that we just pre presented. Uh, C groups, uh, device C groups, to some extent, is used to address those uh, issues. Uh, some say uh, fix user space. So you can either run a, a distribution inside a container or you can run a modified distribution, right? And what we've done is run a mostly unmodified Android distribution. Uh, some say that the preferred way is to modify the distribution, but I'd like to open that for discussion. And of course, any other use cases for device namespaces, we'd be happy to hear about them. So if you have any questions right now. Yes. 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 Yes, yes. Uh, it goes without saying that you can assign a, that, that I started with the uh, notion of visibility, so you could actually make it non-visible or just ban it entirely. Uh, so the policy that says who is active or non-active or doesn't have any access at all is, does not have to be controlled inside the kernel. You, you would have knobs for that to say you have, you don't, uh, but it can be controlled from outside. One of the propositions that I've made is that uh, devices, uh, any device, like a block device, for example, uh, could be assigned to a device namespace just as a network interface is assigned to a network interface. Now, is that helpful in any way? I know it's very aesthetic to me uh, to have that ability, but I still didn't get uh, any uh, request for someone that wants to do that. Exactly, we, we have that, that exact functionality of delegating some device to a container uh, in OpenVC kernel, but uh, as far as I understand, there is no such code <laughs> upstream yet. So yeah, yeah, we would definitely like to see that. Um, not so much an um, answer, but, but a question of my own. Um, Dealing with Android, as I roughly understand it, there are a lot of device drivers in user space. Um, or or anyway, weird things that vendors do where they have itty bitty device driver and the real logics in user space. Um, but, and so is that, so two sides of that question. One side, is that part of the case you're using the active, unactive thing for? And the second part of the question is, um, you know, have you looked at you know, have, have you looked at um, how many capabilities you can drop? Because you know, at least with the Ubuntu guys were talking about it, they couldn't drop any of the capabilities in their containers. And, um, if we're going to do this, it'd be nice if we could engineer it so you can do it without having real capabilities in the container. Um, okay, we haven't been able to drop uh, yeah, most of the capabilities yet, but we're aiming towards there. So the question is. For example, now I know that I need to be able to set up a device mapper. <coughs> so if I'm able to virtualize device mapper in a way that I know that I can set up a private device mapping to a namespace, then I can probably need a lesser capability in order to do that. But I haven't looked that much deeper into that. The first part of the question? The, fir the first part of the question was about um, uh, proprietary libraries or basically what the proprietary drivers that sit on top of the real drivers. Uh, there are quite a bit of those, actually. Uh, some of them uh, are just like uh, OpenGL uh, optimization or whatever uses GPU. And then if they use um, drivers which have very well-defined interfaces, 
uh, in common, then it makes, it makes life much easier to, to use the common interfaces, then you don't have to deal with the proprietary code. In some other cases where you have, uh, for example, the sound subsystem, um, it's, it's a mess in the kernel, um, and outside you have very good obstructions for the system that you're, that you're using, I mean, be it uh, uh, Linux, uh, normal Linux or Android, there are good obstructions where you could actually do the cut fairly easily in user space. But that does, no, does not work for all devices. That, that's the main problem. A lot of devices are very well integrated from the bottom up, from the top down. It's really hard sometimes to separate and find a place where you have very good separation of the interface and, and stable across versions. I want to make something clear. I think it wasn't clear for what we said so far. First of all, we didn't say that we have uh, published our patches uh, about two weeks yeah. ago, I think. And what, what we actually uh, propose is, is a framework where it's easy for a device uh, driver writer to uh, make its device namespace aware. And we've used this framework to make the frame buffer and input event uh, drivers uh, network uh, net device namespace, namespace aware. aware. So that is, this is our proposal, essentially. And to be clear, the only devices that need to be namespace aware are the ones you want to share resources between containers. Uh, right, but yeah. th those are a lot of them. If, if you have two phones, that's almost all the physical devices. So for networks, you don't have to do it. Network namespace does it very nicely. Um, but if you have a, you know, a light sensors, the, all the input subsystem, the frame buffer, the, uh, the proximity, uh, and you go, you know, there's a very long list of devices that, you know, if you run two Androids or two Firefox OS or whatever, you want each of them to be able to access those resources at least in theory, when they're front. So I understand your use case, but I'm thinking of the server one. Mm -hmm. I mean, even on the server, we do have one or two devices that would be nice to share, but most of them will be exclusive. Correct. So the key is that for the exclusive ones, we don't actually collect the namespace away. You can just do it anyway. Correct. Well, okay. Correct. For the, for the server? You don't need this framework. Yeah. You would need changes, I mean, like to uh, CSFS, U events, in order to support uh, exclusive uh, devices and exclusive so virtual devices. Problem. That's a container routine. Yeah. So last question, because we're uh, out of time for this talk, sadly. Well, one other question I have is that uh, in our case, what actually we're trying to do is have hot plug events. And I really want hot plug events to have a device namespace, because I want to say, <coughs> I plug in this device, and I want to associate it with this container. And I only want the events to go to that container and I want to have some sort of abstraction as far as the dev directory is concerned so that uh, they only see the devices that I want the container to see. I'm not really sure how this will solve that particular problem. Did you answer this question? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, that's for, uh, that's for Kira to answer. Oh, okay. Actually, uh, there's, there's a two-level thing. On the first level, you just, you just write the UDEV rule to run some comment to take to say to the kernel that we need to move this device to this container. And the second thing, we need that, that capability that we were discussing before to be able to move the device to a different context, to a different container. So this is what we, we do have that already in, in OpenVZ. And for example, if you plug in, I don't know, a flash drive or something that you can instantly move it to inside the container. So it's it's pretty simple case from our point of view. It just needs to be done. All right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much.